staying with us. Actually, I'd like to just call a few people up here since this is our last run here. Um, our editor, Christina Stiles. Oh, she stepped out while her family is here. Um, Matt Chipalone, one of our videographers who did great work on the camera. Just come on up. Hamid Rasek, who is our ace producer, who introduced us to Chaiba. And last but not least, Chaiber, who's here. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Sure. I mean, I, maybe the question is for you, but how do, can we go back to the beginning? How did we get this going and, and everyone meet and you went on this journey? Yeah, so I had been working as a print reporter for a long time, but kind of became a, a Buzkashi aficionado on the side, and I did a magazine story, I think it was, what, 2016, 2017, and Hamid helped me out as a translator, and then he became a Buskashi connoisseur himself, bought a horse, ditched the suit, grew a beard, <laughs> and we came back and we decided we are going to do this film together, and we were just looking for a lead, you know, who's going to be our, our guy, and he knew immediately that it was Khyber, so we introduced us to Khyber in late 2020, and we knew as soon as we met Khyber that he was the man. Uh, you mentioned becoming Buskazi enthusiasts. At the beginning, you had to give us all a quick lesson about it. How much did you have to learn? What was the learning curve? And then can you talk about the cinematography and shooting the sport? Because it's, it's beautiful. I'll let Mark field that. He's our <laughs> DP and co-director. Um, well, we had to learn quickly. Because if you made the wrong move on the field, you could get trampled by those horses. And so you get, you get a feel for the sport pretty quick in the movement of the horses. And in terms of the cinematography, we really just wanted to capture the, the energy of the sport. If there's anything you can say about Buskashi, it's intense. And to, to give it justice, we knew we'd have to, to get close and shoot wide and somehow stabilize the footage so you could make sense of what was going on. And, and that's what we tried to carry throughout the film. I mean, this is a question, I, I mean, for, for Hyber and for all of you, but I don't know if you set out to make this film when you went out to make it. Maybe it was just about Buscazi and, and his life being interesting, but everything changed so much. How did you both deal with that as a filmmaking team, but also, like, Hyper, were you, were you willing to do that? What was the process? Did things change? Uh, it seemed like obviously quite a harrowing situation. Hi to everyone. Uh, I hope uh, everyone are well. Uh, when I left in Afghanistan, um, when I arrived here, uh, the first uh, years and uh, almost uh, more than two years I live here, that's difficult for me. And uh, always I watch the movie, I watch the pictures, I watch the uh, I, I talked to my family and whole people in Afghanistan. I remember my whole uh, memory, but uh, that's uh, hard uh, for me and for whole family. I want to um, be a good chap on the buskash and the horse man in the USA, but uh, I didn't find that yet in the horse game in the cockboro. But uh, I hope uh, soon. Thank you. And to add a little bit to that, we, we always set out to make more than just a sports film. We knew that with the American withdrawal um, from Afghanistan coming, that there was a political film to tell as well. We just didn't know how quickly the, the Taliban was going to come to power and how much that was going to shape our film. We thought the crux of our film was going to be about the pre and post US kind of occupation of Afghanistan, and it ended up being straddling the line of this 20-year experiment with democracy and now back to, to Taliban rule. And throughout that journey, Khyber and his brother and his family were, were always willing participants in the film and just opened up their lives to, to us and our cameras. And we were, we were grateful to, to be there to be able to capture it. And this is, I mean, are you going to add something? No, OK. No, well, this is the last one on my end. but. I'm curious about the reaction. You said this is the, the last bit of your, your journey in screening the film around, both obviously here and around the world, but like, what is the reaction internally in Afghanistan? Have people seen it, well, like you and your family and people, but also the government? I don't think many people in Afghanistan have seen it yet. Uh, kind of dreading a few people seeing it. Um, there'll be some uh, surprises in store. 
But, I mean, the, you know, the Buzkashi goes on, which is positive. It wasn't clear if the sport was going to be allowed to continue because it was banned for a time under the Taliban. Not in its same form. I mean, a lot of the funding and the enthusiasm is gone. But, uh, you know, the important thing is, is that it endures. And, you know, with any luck, at some point, Khyber and his brother can go back and breathe some more life into it. I'm going to open it up to some questions from the audience. Go okay, ahead, right in front. Hi, um, uh, can I ask you, uh, first of all, to you guys, uh, I mean, the, those shots are incredible. How were you able to do all these things? Uh, did you use the moment of the big mess, or it's like still possible to go there and to shoot uh, uh, Taliban and regular people and all that stuff? It's kind of, to me, it's kind of unique uh, shots that you did. And uh, my question is to you. Uh, uh, what? How, how did you find U.S.? Uh, what did you like so far? Is there any best place, best food? Tell me a little bit about your regular everyday best life. Best horse. <laughs> In terms of access, um, it was always an issue, and especially when the Taliban came to power, we felt that there was a, a window, a short window, but a window where we could explore parts of the country that had kind of been off limits to, to journalists for the past 20 years and inaccessible. And so we, we pushed that as far as we could um, in those first few months. And we found that that window was closing very quickly. And restrictions on, on journalists, on women, everything have just increased since the, the Taliban came to power. And so going there now, we definitely couldn't have the type of access that, that we were able to do in those first few months when that window was still a little bit open. Uh, when I uh, uh, started living in UC, and the first time is, uh, some people said life is uh, very hard and difficult in the UC, but after that step by step, I find everything and find everything. I find uh, Afghani foods uh, like rice, kebab, and uh, lamb meat. I find I find it some place, but I, I, I got that one. Uh, I bring it to my home. I cooking everything. And uh, I find the Afghan restaurant, market, and you see people's, every people's uh, kind uh, for us and my brothers. Uh, they encourage me for everything. Uh, and they show me some me. They're hiring the, some uh, job place. Uh, they find a good way for us. Uh, and uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, some people uh, uh, call me if you need something uh, in any way. We didn't know it right here in the, in the Afghanistan, and this is uh, everything is very difficult. Everything is unlike right here. When I was in Afghanistan, everything is like uh, like a sociality in uh, in our country, and right here everything is online. I find everything. Life is very good, and I'm very happy right here and right now. Thank you. Thank you. Well said. Um, you're going to say, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. I, I see. Okay. You did a great job. And the, the sword really does anything bring head. Really, the, the game itself is just breathtaking. And I wondered if you could talk a little bit about how you cut that together and come to understand the game. Oh, man. Um, sure. <laughs> so I obviously didn't know anything about Buskashi before I came onto this project. You guys, I think, gave me books. Like, I just asked for everything. I was just like, on load me on everything. Um, because as you see in the film, all of the news is from the Afghan perspective, which I loved. Um, but I think you only hear so much from the US side. Um, so I think it just was a lot of listening and a lot of literally just listening to Haibar and Gulbuddin and Google Dean Kalikov, um, and just trying to stay as honest to the film as possible. Um, and I think too, they were so diligent, like the, the footage is obviously beautiful, but they were so diligent on how much they captured that there are so many amazing stories that like we left on the cutting room floor. And I think knowing that those stories couldn't make it to you guys kind of made it that much easier to stay focused on the story at hand and kind of like keep going for them, you know? Because as much as I saw, these guys have seen way more. You know what I mean? So I don't know if that's a good answer, but. It's a great answer. Right on. Any, any more questions? 
If there aren't any more, okay, one here, yes. Well, you, what can we do to help get this film out to more people? It seems like uh, there's never been a better and more important time for folks to see yeah. films like this and the impact of it. So I would love to know what can we do to help get more people to see this film. Maggie, it's so good to see you. You're an angel, I've, producer I've worked with before. Um, spread the word. You know, we just got our first distribution deal in France. Canal Plus picked up the film. But as you know, all of you in the film community know, it's a pretty tough market right now. So we're still looking for distribution in the US and a lot of other places. So if you've got the ear of someone, please bend it. Let them know what you thought. And uh, reviews, too. I mean, we haven't really gotten much critical attention, good, bad, or otherwise. So we're happy to take it, whatever it is. But just generally getting the word out. I know it's a sea of film and, and content out there that people have to digest. But you know, we feel like this film has kind of a slow burn. And I think word of mouth is powerful. So the more people talk and express enthusiasm, the better. And just one update we'd like to share is that uh, Khyber's brother, Gobaldin Kalikov, um, since he moved to the US and he came with his wife, they've, they've had a child, a daughter here in the US that they're raising here. And so we just think about her life and, and what's in stock for her and, and her future, as opposed to if they had stayed in Afghanistan and just the opportunities she's going to, to have here. Um, so we're just all really happy for, for Khyber and their brothers and family here. I mean, would love to give you the last word here, the group of you all, so. Well, let's take it to the bar. We're going to McSorley's old spot around the corner, so if you want Buzkashi pointers from Khyber, or want to geek out on the film, come talk to us. Also got a friend here, Will Grant, who's a bona fide cowboy. He's on the US Coke Brew team, which is basically the US Buzkashi team, so lots of interesting characters, but thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much. You can vote for the, the film with the audience award as well, so please vote for the film. Thank you.